Welcome back. Today we're going to tie the Bow River Bugger. Uh, this is a Peterson near fly. It was designed back in the 80s um, for the Bow River up in Alberta. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a mix between a woolly bugger and a muddler minnow head. Uh, kind of mixes the two flies together. Um, pretty simple pattern um, as far as tying it goes. There's a couple nuances to it that we'll go through, especially with the deer hair that we'll talk about once we get into it. But uh, still to this day, a really popular fly, one that uh, really does well. Uh, very similar to Kelly Gallup's Woolly Sculpin. Um, I'll point out the differences um, between the two as Cam runs into the camera right there and just knocking me out of focus, so I'll switch that up during the edit, but oh well. It's always an adventure with these two, that's for sure. But uh, anyhow, we're going to go ahead and get into this fly, and like I said, I'll explain some of the differences as we get into it and um, some, of the, some of the nuances about the fly. So to start on this one, I have an MFC 7050 size two in the in the vise. Um, typically, you'll see these tied a lot on 4x longs. This is obviously a 3x, um, but I like the 3x. It, it in, in my opinion, it it gives not so much for this pattern, but for like the woolly sculpins and everything, it's easier to get the proportions of the tail and then the deer hair collar accurate. Um, on the 4X, it, it just shifts it off a little bit, so I prefer to go with the, with the 3X on these. So I'm gonna take, this is just some Wooly Bugger Marabou. Typically when I tie these, you'll see me tie them uh, with the blood quill, but I'm gonna mix this up a little bit today and we'll go with the, with the Wooly Bugger. Marabou to get a little bit more fluff to the tail. I typically, like I said, I, I prefer to use the uh, the blood quill, but we'll change this up some today. This gives a little bit more bulk to the fly, um, to the tail, I, I should say, but I think you kind of lose a little bit of, uh, of the motion. Um, and some of the length that you would get with the blood quill. So to start, I'm just gonna take and peel off on these sides right here. I'm gonna take the longer portions of that and then I'm just gonna throw this in and you can see we have all different sizes and everything in there. I'm not busting off any of the tips or anything and uh, we're going to keep this just all pretty much uneven throughout and I'm going to throw this in like so get that secured into place sitting just how we want it and we're definitely going to need two on this I'm going to trim some of that junk up Definitely gonna need two because it's a it's a little bit longer um, of a hook that we're using, and we want to fill this out nice. So we're gonna add two. If you want to, at this point, you can add some internal flash. Typically, with the flash on this, with with the olives, I'd go with like a copper or a gold. Copper's probably my favorite uh, mix for olive, but I'm not gonna throw any flash on this one. And this one has some pretty good tips on it, so I'm going to peel all this stuff back. And we're going to tie this one in essentially like a blood quill marabou. But in between the two stacks of marabou is where I would typically throw my flash in, but I'm not going to flash this one today. I'm going to keep it pretty subtle. Um, but three to four strands on each side of the marabou tail would be a good uh, a good mix if you wanted to throw some flashaboo or even crystal flash in there. So I'm gonna take some small copper wire here. This is gonna be our rib and our counter wrap for the hackle. We'll just take that get it secure and then we'll double that over 
take that up and then we're going to tie in our body material before we advance to the front so for this i'm just going to use a variegated chenille this is like a uh, like a tan and olive or brown and olive it's kind of a, an in-between tan olive or tan brown color here so we're gonna get this tied in let's go from this back end here I like that a little bit better and we're just gonna pick some of the material off so we're tying in just the cotton braid and my thread's not wanting to cooperate with me. I'll give that a quick spin. Everything's looking good to this point, no bumps or anything. And now we're just going to take and advance our thread up, covering up our marabou for a little bit of an added taper. So I'm going to stop where I want to start my deer hair collar. I'm just going to double that stem over instead of trimming it and then we'll half hitch right here throw that in the cradle and then we're going to just spin our body right up to the front about every two to three turns just take and anchor that chenille into place two to three anchor two to three anchor I'm gonna get one more right in the front there so the remainder of that is just gonna be the head and the collar with the deer hair throw that off to the side so for our hackle on this one I'm gonna use a saddle um, this hooks big enough to where you could you could go with a, sh a schlopping feather if you wanted to I'm going to go with the saddle, keep this a little bit more on the sparse side. Tie in an olive saddle here. I like that one a little bit better. We'll use this one. So we're going to take our olive saddle, like I was saying, we're going to get that, tie that into place, get it secure right in front of our um, body material with the chenille there. And then whip or half hitch, get that locked into place, and then we'll grab our hackle pliers. And then we're just gonna take this, just like any woolly bugger dungeon, um, any any of those flies, we're just gonna evenly space that, and you can see we have some nice even wraps on our hackle. Now we're going to take this and counter wrap it with the copper wire and then tie that off right in the front. So everything to this point has essentially been a woolly bugger. Now where we're going to make the difference or where we're going to make the change from a standard woolly bugger to the Bow River bugger is on this head. We're going to put like a muddler style uh, deer hair head on and it's more of a bullet shaped head now like I was saying at the beginning there's a lot of similarities between this and Kelly's woolly sculpin the woolly sculpin difference or the difference between the two I should say is the way the heads are trimmed the head on the on the woolly sculpin is trimmed just like the cougar where it's flat on the bottom and the pectoral fins are a lot more pronounced. Um, I prefer that way. I prefer that style of head as opposed to the muddler style. But we're going to tie this one um, with the original design minus the collar. I'll, I'll explain that in a, when I get to that point. I've never liked the collars that go the entire way around the body or the the entire way around the fly i like them when they sit on the top um that's that's a like stabilizing uh aspect to the fly that that collar like that 
and then also the the flathead that that Kelly came up with um, that's also a stabilizing feature of the fly but we're gonna tie this one like I said as close to the original as possible minus that portion with the, the collar I've, I've just never liked that I don't tie them like I don't tie anything like that on my personal flies but just to let you know that's the way that this one was originally designed so I need a little bit more deer hair here um, this is one that I dyed last fall it's kind of a or last winter it's kind of a mix between an olive and a tan I wasn't too crazy about it no, still really not but uh, it'll work for some reason the dye bath didn't take on this one but overall it's it's pretty good deer hair a little bit on the short side um, but it'll definitely work for this fly so we're just gonna go ahead and stack that and like I said this is gonna be the collar portion only when this one was originally done that needs a little bit more of a stack when it was originally done and, and still to this day a lot of the the times when you see it tied they incorporate the head and the collar in one tie um, I don't really like the way that that turns out um, you wind up with a little wedge there if it's not done really precise so this eliminates that possibility and it also makes a nice clean collar as well so we're gonna measure this out and get a couple of those strays that were flying around on me I'm just gonna measure this out set this back to where my collar ends between the point and the barb of the hook on a 3x long on a 4x you would be the point would be the furthest back that you would go so I'm gonna cut that off nice and square get a turn on my thread here and like I said this is gonna be a half moon collar I'm not taking it the entire way around and it's gonna really represent pectoral fins so there we go we have that coming back maybe a little bit on the long side on that collar um, eh, slightly long maybe slightly long I could back that off a touch but I kind of like the way that it fits the profile on this one so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that and now I'm gonna go into the actual head portion of this fly This is, we're just going to spin some deer hair all the way around and the thing that you want to really pay attention to on this is when you're spinning your deer hair or when you're setting your deer hair in place you want it to be sparse the really compact thick deer hair heads look great um, coming off the vise but functionally they don't perform as well because there's so much uh, material in there it's tough for water to get in between individual fibers and it winds up riding a lot higher in the water column for you so the more the the more sparse that you can get this while still filling the profile of that bullet head the better um, don't overstack or overuse deer hair on this and that goes for really any streamer pattern minus you know your D and D's your SIDS um, your divers anything like that to where the deer hair head is the driver of the fly meaning as you as you actuate the fly or as you're stripping it the deer hair head causes the motion this right here is just a profile this isn't a driver it, it's a profile thing so you're building the head to where it's able to look like a sculpin um, I touched on that a good bit when I did the video on all the different deer hair uh, heads and designs and functions um, when I did that video sometime last year I would guess is when I did that so as you can see here we have a really sparse head on this 
but it's just enough to where it's going to be able to give us enough hair to really get that bullet style um, of a profile but it's not so much to where it's going to hinder the sink rate of our fly so now what i want to do is just take this and i probably could have went a little bit heavier on that top um, but i'm going to let this be because like i said if i can get away with less on this i'm going to the more com the more hair looks better coming off the vise but it doesn't perform as well so we're just going to take this and we're going to get our overall shape and like i said this is a bullet style head not like your typical dungeon or your cougar or even the woolly sculpin to where it's flat on the bottom and that causes the wobble in the in the water this is more of a um muddler style head if you will so I just want to trim this up. It's going to be rounded pretty much the entire way around. It's going to, well, it has the name for a reason. It's a bullet style head. So we're just taking this and we're rounding it around. It's not as wide or as broad as what you'll see on the, on the woolly sculpins, the cougars, things of that nature. It's a little bit more slender. And then you can also tie this with a cone head in the front if you would like. I may do that one here later in the year. But we're just kind of rounding this head off, making everything uniform and clean throughout. Getting rid of some of these strays in the process. So we can trim this up just a little bit more. I want to streamline that back just slightly. Give it a little bit more pronounced bullet in the front. Without trimming too much of it away, I don't want to get too carried away on it. We have the rounded head portion that we're after. Um, like I said, I'm not going to get too carried away. Obviously, like I said before, if you throw more deer hair on there, it's going to be a lot easier to shape that and it'll look better for you, but it won't perform as good in the water um, when you have the sparse head because, like I said, it does affect the sink rate of the fly. Um, I don't know. sculpin or cougar or anything laying around it's probably up on the um, in the bins and everything to, to run a, a compare and contrast to but like I said this is the uh, the woolly sculpt or the uh, Bow River bugger and like I said the only real difference that I do on the ones that I tie and that I fish is I have that half moon collar as you can see right here from the underneath side there's no deer hair underneath um, the original had it that way and I've, I've, I've never really liked it. Um, I've never really liked that design. I didn't like, one, I don't like the look of it, two, I don't like the way that it fishes. I think it affects the, the swim a little bit, but just know that that's how the original was done and the collar was a lot shorter and uh, less pronounced on this one, but this is how I tie my own uh, for the ones that I actually put in my box. But. That is the Bow River Bugger. Stumbled on that one a little bit there. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. Thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you next Wednesday.